Hey everybody, thanks for coming back. Again, if I miss your questions, I'll get to those in just a minute if you want to repeat them. Um, yeah, um, what, what I was getting into, his sacrifice was to symbolize, you know, to not do sins again because you don't, you don't want to sacrifice an animal. Um, but Yeshua, Jesus himself, was a sacrifice for our sins as an atonement, a perfect, perfect, perfect man without righteousness. And um, he followed all his laws perfectly. And in order for us to be without sin, if he didn't, if he disobeyed one law of the Torah, then we would not be able to have salvation. We would not have his spirit. We would have nothing. So he had to cleanse us. He came out of his grace. He cleansed us from our sin in order to house his Holy Spirit within us. So what I'm, what I'm saying is the high priest, the Kohen Haggadah, he went once a year into the back, in the, in the, in the back of the temple. And what he did is, is sacrificed once a year on Yom Kippur, once a year, for all the sins of Israel, there was one, one special sacrifice they did. And that was to be the remittance of our sins and, and the covering of our sins, okay, of the nation. And, um, and everyone that has sinned, it was supposed to heal the land. And I'm, I'm going to get into something about the land in just a minute. Um, <laughs> yeah, but, uh, yeah, I'll get into that in just a second. But... Just as the high priest had to be perfectly righteous, okay, he had to be perfectly righteous in order to go into the back and the, the behind the curtain. Yeshua, uh, when he died, the curtain torn, it, it it unveiled. So we had now have direct access to go in the holiest of holies by access of Yeshua Jesus to God. And the only way to do that was to die for our sin, a perfect lamb without blemish. He had to be perfect. The Son of God Himself. So, we now, you see, I'm hoping you're understanding how important it is. What He actually came to do in His sacrifice for our sins. It's not, he, you know, what you hear in church. He died for our sins or repent from your sins and believe that He rose again the third day. No, it's so much deeper than that. If we die with Him, if we die with Him, how can we still be alive in sin? How can we continue in it? That's what 1 John, John 3 is saying. Like, the sinner, the ones that continue in sin, has never seen him or known him. For, for the beginning of time, lawlessness has always been the works of the devil. And he came to deliver us from lawlessness. And why don't I get into 1 John? Should I get into 1 John? Because... I want to get me sort of. <laughs> just, uh, yeah. Okay, um... First John, um, I, I, I want to read this really quick here. Then I'm going to get into the land in just a second, because um, I, I feel that's important too. What I was going to get to. Okay, dear friends, and this is part of the sheep knowing his voice. The sheep know his voice, and this this is why we should. When we're coming out of the world, we don't know where we're coming. That's why I'm saying when I was talking about Revelation 18 and the the fruits, the lusting after the, the the ways of Babylon and the riches of earth. And the thing is, when we're becoming like God, we don't know where we're becoming. That's what He says right here. We don't know what we're becoming, but we know where we're becoming like Him. So when we see Him, we'll be just like Him. That's why we're be taken out of this world. We don't know the things we once took pleasure in, we no longer take pleasure in. The things we once desired, we no longer desire. The one things that once satisfied us was deceitful, and it no longer desire, it satisfies us or fulfills any cravings, except only God's word. And that's why it's the bread and the water of, it's the bread of life and the living water. And it gives us life. And that's why he says, when we do not know, dear friends, we are God's children now. And it is not, it has not been made clear what we will become. We do know that when he appears, we will be like him because he, we will see him as he really is. You see his kingdom come on earth. He's coming, and we, when we see him, that's what I'm saying. When I say things, I'm speaking in by, by God, God's word. I'm speaking what he's saying to me, 
um, that the people, a lot of people aren't going to recognize him if he came back right now. Because a lot of people aren't going to recognize him because what he, when he comes back, we're going to know him because we'll know his word. The reason the Pharisees didn't recognize him because they're making oral laws and following up the ways of religion rather than of God's word. The ways of man rather than the ways of God. And those who know God, you'll understand why I say you'll have a desire for, to obey. We do not know. We do know that when he appears, we'll be like him because we will see him as he really is. And everyone who has this hope in him continues purifying himself. Since God is pure, everyone who keeps sinning is violating the law. Indeed, sin is violation of the law, which is the Torah. You know that when he appeared in order to take away sins, and that there is no sin in him, so no one who remains united with him continues sinning. Everyone who does continue sinning is neither seen him nor known him. And a lot of people I've seen churches say, they'll use a the theology and doctrine saying, well, that's, that's for the people that have not repeated the prayer. That's for the people that have not been saved. That's for the people that have accept, accepted Jesus in their heart. No, that's for everybody. That's for everybody. That's not, this is for everyone. Children, don't let anyone deceive you. It is the person that keeps on doing what is right who is righteous, just as God is righteous. The person who keeps on sinning is from the adversary, which is the devil. Because from the very beginning, the adversary has kept on sinning. And it was for this very reason that the Son of God appeared to destroy these things of the adversary, the devil. No one who has God as his father keeps on sinning. Because the seed planted by God, there's the seeds, the seeds of righteousness. And in Babylon, Revelation 18 is the seeds of sin, of the adversary, the Antichrist. It goes all the way back to Nimrod. That is, he cannot continue sinning because he has God as his father. Here is how one can distinguish clearly between God's children and those of the adversary. Everyone who does not continue doing what is right is not from God. Likewise, anyone who fails to keep loving his brother is not of God. See, and he even goes back, he starts talking about Cain and Abel. He goes back to... The powers from the, the fruits from the very beginning, the bad fruits, the bad seeds. Everything is a seed, whether it's righteous seeds or, or, or wicked seeds. And that's why we have to be careful who we listen to because these seeds are being planted and some things are unknowingly growing within people. Uh, and, and that's why a, it's causing people to separate in, from the uh, cause of apostasy, fall into this gr false grace uh, message. And they, they made, and just like he warned, a, a new gospel. There will be a new gospel. They will be teaching a new, uh, like a new Jesus, a new Yeshua. It will be a new gospel. It sounds holy, but it's not the word of God. And that's what we have to be careful about. And that's what a lot of people are not teaching his word. And the only way, you have to seek it. We can't feed the oil off of everybody else because without you desiring, you are not going to come close to God. Because that's why even a lot of people say, well, God, didn't I do this? Didn't I do this? He is saying, depart from me, you workers of lawlessness. Though you might have been obeying, you didn't take time to know him. It, it's just, it's, it's by his grace alone, but his grace will, will you, if you have his grace, you'll desire to walk in his ways. You'll desire to know him just as I desire to have a relationship with my wife and get to know her more and more. It doesn't just, once you get married, 10 years goes down the road and you're like, huh, well, you know, I know pretty much everything about you, you know, so I'll, I'll, you know. It's sit back and relax. Now I'm going to sit here and uh, fantasize on my sports TV show. You know, I, of course, I'm not going to go there because there's probably some people watching that love sports. Um, um, but, uh, yeah, no, you're going to want to know God and know his ways. Um, but what I was going to say is the land. God says he warns. He warned over and over again that he would that people they would be vomited out of the land. In the same way I'll vomit you out of my mouth in Revelation. He says, I will vomit you out of the land. It's it's because the land mourns, the earth mourns. For every sin there is a result. For every sin for action of obedience there is a result. Consequences 
it's, it's either life or death, and you choose. That's why he says in the beginning of the Torah, he says, this day choose life, not death. He sit, gives the blessings and the curses. And it, just like in Revelations, there's the blessings and the curses. What's going to happen? What's going to happen for the unrighteous that don't desire to walk in his ways? He's... And the people, that, the disobedient and the obedient, what's going to happen to both of them? It says the consequences of the, the righteous and the non-righteous. And he warns over and over again, Peter, Jude, um, James, they warn uh, over and over again the result of lawlessness. And lawlessness is sin. What is the opposite of lawlessness is lawfulness. So that's, what is the, what, what is law? It's it's the law. If we know God, we we'll, His law is going to be put within us. We don't have to sit here and look back. Like I said, we don't have to sit here and make chart checklists of everything we have to do. Well, you know, well, maybe I, I you know, I, you know, should I really give to that homeless guy or should I, you know, should I really not commit adultery? Uh, should I steal this candy bar? Well, you know, let me go and check the Torah here. No, it's on your conscience. It's on your heart. You know right from wrong. It's just like if you're watching something that's evil or wicked, or you're, you're some guys, I'm going to say this, like, if you're about to sit there and you're about to look on your phone and some you have that lust come upon you, like, let me look at this porn. No, that you have, you, he'll always provide a way out. You, does, you choose life or death. Sin is death. That's what he's talking about in Romans. Sin is death. But if you had the law, it's like you only know God. There's no be distinguished be before, like, well, the law is holy, righteous, and good. It's used for correction and teaching and righteousness. And that's what it's used for. It's convicting of sin. But we have the law within us, so it helps correct us and bring us back on path. But nevertheless, we have the power of God. If, if I didn't know, here's the thing, I wouldn't know what faithfulness is to a wife or what, what, how loving my neighbor was if, if it wasn't for God's word. It's like we all would have probably been just like the Romans and the Greeks and all the other religions going out and masquerading and having all these great parties because we all had that seed of lust because that's what Satan came to do. First John 3, that's what he's saying, the works of the Satan is lawlessness. That was the works of Satan from the beginning of time. It was the way to lead people astray. It's the way to make th God, people think that God's ways are evil. And that's what Nimrod did. He made people think that God was evil for flooding the earth. <laughs> and he led people astray to lawlessness. So um, in the worship him, which in, is Baal. Nimrod is Baal. It's the spirit. It's him. It's That's what it was. Um, so... Guys, um, yeah, what I was saying though, the sin will, the land will vomit you out of mouth. That's why he 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 said you'd be exiled out of the land, so the land would have Shabbat. It would have its rest. It would have its peace, and that's why he said nobody would live in the land. And that's what happened time and time again. That's why they'd be exiled <clears throat> and brought back. And the same thing is going right now for even the righteous believers. We're all scattered, all abroad. The, the, though the Jews have brought back, and that's that's a significant prophecy for you know fulfilling a prophecy, and he, he says when the fig tree blooms, not only did did the fig tree bloom, but we're 1967 and that or 1968 when they brought them back 1967, Israel became a nation. In Isaiah, it says in a single day, like in in, in 1948, happened in a single day. They won the war in a single day. But 1967, the Messianic movement is not a it's not a religion. It was a uprising of bringing Jew and Gentile together, believing in Yeshua Jesus in one body. It was a restoration uh, in the last days, just like in, in in the first century. That's what happened. It was a restoration of Jew and Gentile in one body to know His ways. And what happened? We had the Catholic Church divide, divide and create factions and feudings and dominations. That's what happened. Even the Jews before Jesus Yeshua came, they had feuds and factions. The Pharisees, there was 20 sectors within the Pharisee movement alone. Um, there was, there was uh, the Sadducees. There was, they had a sector and type of schooling themselves. They were the people, the Sadducees, you know, believed. Um, there was a, the, the school of Hillel and Gamaliel. Um, and there was... There was different schools that taught different things, and a lot of the teachings we even see is off the, the, the off the teachings of of Hillel, um, Gamaliel, which was what Paul was taught under. He was hand selected. That'd be like you and I being hand selected out of Harvard and being picked to come study at Harvard, but being made 
under the top teacher at Harvard and being schooled under him. That's what happened to Paul. He was hand selected, and that's why he says he 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 is a Pharisee, not was, but he counted it all as nonsense. The the oral law he was taught under Gamaliel, which which is given a name. He was given a name as not just rabbi, but rabbin, which is a, taller, a Torah expert above. He's the best teacher out there. No other could, could, could come above him, the way his teachings were. And that's why Paul said he, he counted all as unrighteous for the sake of Yeshua Jesus. And what's amazing, and I'm going to show you something, what's amazing, he sat there in front of everybody. All the teachers in front of Gamaliel, in front of everyone. And he said he was a, a, te- he was a student under the foot of G- G- Gamaliel. G- Gamaliel, I can't, okay, now I'm stuttering my words, can't say, can't talk, guys. Um, but yes, he was a teacher under him. He listened to his words, but then what did he say? Every, so many got mad at him because, and some came to believe because of what he spoke. He, was, he counted it all as unrighteousness because of Yeshua Jesus, and he was proclaiming his name. He was teaching his word. So, so look how much faith Paul had. It wasn't just some, some new Christian movement. No, it was Jew and Gentile in one body. He went to the Gentiles, but he was teaching Jews as well. That's what Hebrews was for. Romans was for the Jews and the Gentiles. He was talking to the people in Ephesus and Corinth. He was talking to those people. There was a lot, a lot were... Um, Christians, but, you know, um, Gentiles. They started calling the, the believing faction of Jews and Gentiles in one body Christians. That's what they called them. And it was a derogatory term as you were to call me cracker or something. It's just, it's, it's spiteful. The, the people that hated him, hated Yeshua, Jesus, they tried to separate them, put them into one category. Um, so, the world gave them that name. It wasn't given by God. So, we are, they actually called them the way. They called them the way in God fears. A lot, that's what a lot of times they called them in the New Testament. A lot of them were pagans, and Paul had to teach them that's right. They had to teach them God's ways. That's exactly right. And thank you for saying that. Um, they had to teach them God's ways. That's why he said. When people think, oh, there the, was just a, those one couple of laws when he said, oh, don't abstain from meat sacrifice to idols and idolatry and sexual fornication, right? Okay, but you can even see idolatry way in Revelation 18 right? and even way back in the Old Testament, idolatry. These things, if, if you commit any of these things, that's not loving your neighbor and that's not loving God with all your heart, soul, and mind. All the laws and the prophets, that's why I said, are based hang from these two they come from these two so all of them loving your neighbor loving god you cannot there's nothing against the torah if you do that obeying god's ways loving him you're going to walk in his ways because you have his law within your heart there's nothing that stands against it but that's why he's saying if you if you commit adultery you can't love your neighbor you can't love god if you have idolatry, you love your riches, you love your house, your cars, and different things in your life. You want acceptance, popularity, fame, money. Different things are filling your heart. That's the bad seeds. And those, nobody can, you see, it, you can't even covet. That's the thing, coveting. It all goes all the way. You see the fruits, the bad seeds, all the way in Revelation. And that's what he's warning these people of. And sexual immorality, same thing. Porn. Having sex with people. That's why he said in Corinth. He said, I even got word that some some people, there's a man amongst you that has having sex with their father's wife. So he's pointing out these things and having to instruct people in a way, people that didn't know Torah, in a way that they could not to burden them. Because most of them that came to know Yeshua Jesus, they had already knew him because the word was written within their hearts. And they had a they bared conscience of them. They walked out his morals and his laws without even knowing it. So you love your neighbors. You have the, the, you love God. You desire to walk in His ways. It's just like I said. You go on the street. You see a homeless man. You're going to walk past him and just say, "Well, let me go check the Torah to see if I should give him something," or you know, my brother just is about to get evicted and he's been working hard, but he's just been struck, struck in with a bad sickness. 
Let me check the Torah to make sure I should actually do that, if that's of God or not. If, that's, if people do that, that's not walking in the Spirit. We walk in the Spirit, we'll walk out the ways of God. If we don't, we're going to make God's laws into legalism. And that's what what's happening in the ways days of Jesus there. Just like the, they're making oral laws of men, just like washing hands before eating. He was That's why he's yelling at Jesus, Yeshua, they're coming on to him because they, they people thought they, they were um, talking about not eating pork and stuff like that. But listen, I'm not going to get into that, but that's talking about washing your hands when it comes to bread, before eating bread. And if you don't know the, the Jewish perspective, the Hebrew perspective, you're going to know in that time. That's the thing. You go 2,000 years... And we suddenly modernize the Word of God instead of going to the root, the, the very basic beginning. And that's not in the law of God, of washing your hands before eating the bread. And, and that's what was going on. And, and that's why they made oral laws out of things, out of God's words. And just like, that's why he was saying, those you say do not commit adultery. But I tell you, if you have even lusted with your eyes and looked after your neighbor's wife with adultery you have with, with a lustful heart you have committed adultery right and that's what he's saying he's he didn't make it easier he's putting it to a spiritual perspective and it's actually makes it harder when you think about it because it's like wow that's why he said have a single eye have a single eye and it, that's why he says if the the eye is wicked then the whole body is wicked if the if the the eye is not in light then the whole body is in darkness that's why he says you can't not love God and money. You can't not love sexual fornication. You can't love those things and claim to be of God and love him or love your neighbor. So let me see right here. He had to teach them the Torah, but not all instantly because every Sabbath they taught Torah. So Churches who say Torah was abolished by reading Galatians, Romans, and Paul's letters have been taught a man-made doctrine. Yes. Um, guys, um, something I wanted to get into. He says, no longer do I tell you an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. But I tell you that if your neighbor slaps you on, was it the right cheek? Give him your left. And what he's actually saying right there, a lot of people, and this is what I'm saying, this is part of this false grace movement. They're going to teach you that no matter what, okay, what it means is being humiliated by, by others in the name of Yeshua Jesus. When you're being persecuted in the name of his name, you see, back in, the, in, in those times when somebody were to slap you, okay, they would have to pay they'd go, when they'd go to court. They would pay, have to pay, like, was it 200? It was um, a certain currency back then. Um, there was a certain currency, but double that if they hit them with the backhand or stripped somebody naked and um, humiliated them in, 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 in the middle of the square, okay? So that's what he's saying. If somebody... It comes against you and slaps you in his name that's not to 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 we're to let them do it right okay but what i'm saying is when we are not to go to court and sue them and try to get money just because somebody hit us because of believing in yeshua jesus we don't go to court and sue them that's why he says give them coat off your jacket if it's just like if 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 you're what what is it the, uh, if a soldier tells you to carry his pack and take it a mile you know go go to extra length he's saying don't do the minimum he's saying to go to extra mile for each other love each other he's like don't don't take each other to the court forgive each other that's what he's saying and there's so many people suing and 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 that's what's going on even Corinthian he was telling the people there's people fighting and feuding and even bringing each other to court and suing each other. That's what he's talking about. It's not the love of God. And that's why we, it goes back. That's why the, the Torah is there for correction and teaching and instruction. It leads us to godliness and righteousness. But we have the spirit there that convicts us and lead us, leads us into the ways of his light. Rather, so our eyes aren't full, our eye isn't dark and our body isn't filled with darkness. So we are filled with the light. We have a, a, a single eye that's filled with light. Um, so 
that's why they're suing each other in, in Corinthians. And they weren't loving each other. And that's why he says, if somebody comes and persecutes you in my name, this that had nothing to do. And this is why the, this false grace movement is teaching you that has to do. And they'll, they'll come on to even Israel and say they're at wrong because war is wrong. No, there's a time for war. There're a time for peace. There's a time for love. There's a time for you to see. Okay, there's a time for everything. That's what Ecclesiastes even says. It's, and what what he's saying is, is if somebody just like the Torah, if you don't know the, the law, you are going to know if somebody breaks in your house. If they're coming to rape your your wife, if somebody breaks in your house, the Torah tells us we can self, do self defense. Now, if we're out in the in the out in the street and somebody slaps us for preaching Yeshua's name. Or teaching his word and they're against us and they come up and punch us in the face and slap us or try to kill us let them let them I, i'm gonna tell you I, I don't even try to fight but if somebody breaks in your house or just like in countries that there's war they're trying to wipe out the remnant just like you know was coming war is going to happen okay it's going to until yeshua jesus comes back and that's that's a given. And that's that word is not for that word. The word is for that when people come to humiliate you and humiliate you and talk bad about you and bring down your name. We should be growing in humility and not in pride. And pride would want to punch somebody back. And that's not loving your neighbor. Pride, you cannot love your neighbor. So that's the purpose. When we love, we're not going to take somebody to court. You know, you're just not. You're gonna. If somebody sues you for this amount of money, give it to them. Is the money really your your idol? Just like when uh, here's another thing: is charging your brother or your sister interest. I want to tell you something. You you bankers, some of you uh, bankers and loan. If there's anybody that that does loans and uh, is in finances and such as charging interest, I'm telling you, you're <laughs> you might want to get out of your industry because you're not. You're not going to love your neighbor. You cannot love your neighbor and charge people interest. You can't. That's why he says, give him the coat off of your back. Give him your, your jacket because you're going to loan, he, even in the Torah, you're going to give your jacket to somebody because in the Torah, it said, give your jacket to somebody. Then you would, you would tell them to give them back to them at the end of the day. You try, you know, or try to give something to them as well as ransom. So that's why he's basically saying go above and beyond. If somebody needs a jacket, give the jacket off your back. Don't just do the minimum. Try to go above and beyond out of the love of God. Don't try to make it legalistic. Like, I'm not saying like, oh, there's, there's five homeless people on the street now, you know, because of what he's saying, I'm going to go make 20 sandwiches and go give them. Don't. That's legalistic. Do it out of the love of your heart. If you really have a compassion and burning in your heart, do it. Do whatever you feel God is speaking. If God tells you to do something, why not do it? Let the Spirit lead. You hear that little voice. That's why he says, things that are in secret, that is in darkness, I'll bring the light. And things that whisper in your ear, <laughs> he'll speak in our ear. So that little voice you hear in your head is, you know, it, you're, you're walking in the Spirit. Let, let the conscience bear witness to the Spirit within you. Um... Let me see. I get confused after reading through Galatians. Reading through, it does not look like we're free from the law. <laughs> Can you elaborate? Yes. Um, Galatians. Galatians was, the whole fight was mainly about circumcision, okay? And what made people a Jew or a Gentile was, and it was fighting about, that's why I was saying, I said earlier on, I'm not sure if you were here, uh, but there was a fight about in order to be saved, and that's why there are zealot, zealots there of a certain sector. Of course, there's many zealots of different types, um, but the zealots that are on top of Masada were different, and these zealots are persecuting people for not having a circumcision. They'll come in there and raid their house and take all their belongings and things like that, and that's what, what they're pull, pull their pants down, things like that. Um, they're o over ruling, to overturning some people's faith and saying that the, for the Gentiles saying that, oh, you had to do this in order to receive salvation. But was God's grace shown to Abraham before circumcision or after? If those that read the Torah, you will know he was circumcised before. Later, he became circumcised. Okay. Is the circumcision of the heart or is it of the flesh? 
Did you become receive the spirit before the, the flesh or after? So I'm going to get into something here. Um, Chapter 6 of Galatians. Brothers and sisters, if someone is caught doing something wrong, you who are directed by the rock, which is the spirit, restore such a person in a spirit of gentleness, looking closely at yourself so you are not tempted also. Bear one another's burdens. And there I go. I was just talking about that, okay? And in this way, you, you fulfill the Torah of Messiah. That's the law on the heart and in, in our mind, okay? Um, for if anyone thinks he is something when he is nothing, he is fooling himself. Rather, let each one examine his own work. Then he will have pride in himself alone. And not in comparison to anyone else. And that's another thing. We're not judging each other based on people's works. That's another thing. We all should look at ourselves. Don't look look in the mirror. Look at the mirror in your heart. The Torah is a reflection. Does it reflect that? If you open up the chest of Yeshua Jesus, you'll see the Torah right there on his heart. They were doing that Galatians comparing each other's works. So yeah. Like they were they were um comparing each other's works and even circumcision based on their holiness. So that, and that's why some people are being boosted up in pride, and they're saying, "Look at me, I have circumcision." Or look at me. Well, you need to be circumcised. You need you need to be circumcised, and they're to go and parade around and and shout shout to everybody, saying, "You know, you have to be circumcised in order to go to heaven," mm -hmm. things like that. Okay, so if I'm if I'm sitting here telling you, you know, I'm sitting here like, "Hey, hey, you over there, mm -hmm. look, this person just got circumcised." Yeah. Like, you know, look what I just did. I just, I just donated this much money. Take a picture of me doing it. You see, you see, it's pride. And unfortunately, it's worked its way in a lot of people's synagogues. It's not just circumcision. You, you take that, even circumcision of the heart. A lot of people has pride in their heart, so that means they're uncircumcised in their heart. So we can even go even deeper. Everything is spiritual and physical as well. So um, now let the one who has taught the word share all good deed things with his teacher. Do not be deceived. God is not mocked for whatever man sows that he shall also reap. For the one who sows in the flesh will reap corruption from the flesh, but the one who sows in the rock, the spirit, will reap from the rock, the spirit, for eternal life. What is the spirit? And what is the spirit, everyone? <laughs> the spirit. It's a law within our heart. Um... Yeah. Uh, Look, can you read this last piece? Yeah. Too? Because he even says how they are taking pride in those people that they're causing to. Yeah. That. Yeah. You're right. They're taking pride in people that they were causing uh, to circumcise, and um, and that's why people were no longer walking in the spirit. <clears throat> they were walking in the spirit of the law, which is what Paul is saying in in Romans. The you know they're walking in the flesh. And when you walk in the flesh, you're going to reap corruption. You're not going to have the power to walk out the ways of God. So you're going to do it out of legalism. You can't love your neighbor and love God by, if you're not walking in the Spirit. That's why the Torah is on is the Spirit. It's in, there, in us. Those without it, that's why 1 John 3 says they'll continue in lawlessness. Because the beginning of the time, that was the work of the adversary, Satan. Notice the large letters I am writing to you. You with my own hand. Those wanting to look good outwardly are trying to force you to be circumcised. You see, it's all about themselves. And that's why we have to read in context. It's all, that's in, understand what's going on in Galatia. You have to understand what's going on in Ephesia, in, in, in Ephesus and uh, Corinthia and um, Thessalonica. And, Thessalonica and different places. You have to understand what was going on in the culture, the time period. Uh, what was the, bat, the the culture, what people were doing, what was the fights about, what was Paul writing for. You can't just read it on a modern day church, what they're going to read, and just say, you're free from the law. Okay, go commit lawlessness, go commit adultery and porn, you're going to heaven, sure. You, that's not what it's talking about. The law is within your heart. And if you have, if it's on your heart, you have been a new creation. You've been a new creature, right? And so that's what he's saying. Doing the works of the flesh. Being circumcised is not going to change anything. But those particular people. 
but these particular people were trying to get these people and, and boasting about getting these people circumcised. And th let me go right back here. And, um, and uh, of course, you can read this. If you go back and read this, you're going to see everything. But you have to read it. You, yeah, you can't, you can't just go, go, don't go on Wikipedia, don't go reading these things. Ask God to show you, reveal it to you, turn off your pastor, because, you know, turn off, turn off YouTube teachings, don't go after those things, because I'm going to show you what, the spirit, and I, I know God's going to reveal some things to people right now, for look, here, here we see, we see right here, I'm reading Galatians 5 over here, um, See, <laughs> as for me, brothers and sisters, if I still proclaim circumcision, why am I still being persecuted? See, Paul was even saying, he was even teaching, the or when he was instructed under Gamaliel, as I talked about uh, earlier, he, he was stood in front of everybody, and he counted it all as worthless. He, he was the most smartest man. He was incredibly smart. He was basically like... Um, the Einstein, Albert Einstein of his day, he was in, that's why it's so hard, that's why Paul, or Peter says, some of his things, for the, you know, the unstable, it's hard to discern, it's hard to, you'll, you'll, you'll destroy his words, just like they do the worst, rest of the scripture, because they're not firmly planted, that's why the wolves are coming in, the false shepherds, and they're taking people away from God, the people that are unstable, so, um, what I'm saying is, this is what he's saying. That's what Paul is even saying right there at the beginning. And people say, well, Paul is all loving. Listen. <laughs> Listen to what he says. You're running a great race. Who blocked you from following the truth? See, the truth. This detour doesn't come from one who calls you. A little hamets works its way through the whole batch of dough. It's a little leaven. I am confident in the Lord that you will not you will not think otherwise. But the one who is confusing you will pay the penalty penalty whoever is. As for me, brothers, my sisters, if I still proclaim circumcision, why am I still being persecuted? Here it goes. In that case, the stumbling block of the cross has been eliminated. I only wish those who are agitating you would would castrate themselves. They were the ones causing confusion. They were the ones causing confusion. <clears throat> See, it's just like me. If I was telling you, you could, you could be saved by uh, works of the law. No, the law is within you. It's play, by grace alone. And by that grace, you have a desire to obey. If you believe and it, you, it's, it bears it conscience. Show. If you believe it, it will show in your walk. It, the, the fruits will bear fruit. You'll bear fruits to the way you walk. That's why he says, don't, Paul says in Romans, don't be hearers of the law, but doers. Read it to the end of his letter. Read everything from the beginning to the end, slowly. And if you have trouble, read what was going on in that time period. Read the culture. Study the culture. St study the time period. Study what would the people were doing, the, the practices, the works, the things that they were doing in the cultures. Because I can go to even ones when he was talking about people taking out of context about eating, eating anything. But he's actually talking about their, their, their practices, okay? Um, and they're, they're about me about eating food, feed, food sacrificed to idols, okay? That's why they had meat markets, okay? Um, they had meat markets, and what they're doing, they had wreaths. It wasn't Christmas, okay? But that's where the practices came from it's way back, way back. They had wreaths and, and garland and things like that. They'd dress their boots, boots up, and they would make it all pretty and with all these different paints and trees and decorate the trees. And... They were free, afraid to buy in the fruit, the meat markets. So the Jews and the Gentiles, he's saying, don't be afraid. Don't cause a stumbling block for your brother. For what you have what you have eaten, you blessed before God, and he has made it clean. You see? So he's talking about going and buying beef and stuff like that, and, and not pork and all that. Okay, beef and and uh, lamb and from the meat markets. It was too... It was to not cause a stumbling block. If I were to go to your house and I'm thinking, oh, you're sacrificed that maybe to an idol, then I would cause you to stumble. I would, that's not loving. You see what I'm saying? 
but if you know out of conscience that something is sacrificed to an idol, you know it was, and they told you, don't. that's why Paul says, don't do it. Out of your conscience and out of the other person's conscience. See, but if you go into the meat box, that's why he says, what, eat, eat whatever you, in, in the markets, without bearing conscience. Because don't be afraid whether it's a sacrifice to idols or not. That's what he's saying. Um, so I'm going to go in here really quick. But here, this is a proof that he's teaching the law is on the heart. Um, brothers and sisters, you're called the freedom. And let me tell you something about that freedom. A lot of people say it's freedom. Now I'm free from the law. No, you, the, the law has given you freedom. freedom. The law is freedom. If you go and break the law, what happens? Jail! Prison! Okay? So that's why he says, where, where the weeping and wailing, where there's gnashing of teeth. Freedom is, the law was freedom from the very beginning, where before we knew right from wrong, before we knew sin, we only knew him, which was the law, which was freedom. Adam and Eve had freedom to walk around the, the, the Garden of Eden freely. Freely. The moment they ate the bad seed, and this is what I've been talking about way back when, even the bad seeds all the way to Revelation 18, all the way to Nimrod, from the fall of man, it couldn't go all the way back. The bad seeds are Satan, and then demons plant them, and people lust after them, they take them. And what had happened, it caused people to become under bondage. You're in slavery. What do you come to free us from? Sin. What do you come to free us from? Death. What is sin? Death. What it is sin? Life? It's death. The law God gave us on Mount, Mount Sinai as a way to bring us close to him. Then he came in the flesh to put his law within us. The word he became flesh and put his law within us and give us the power to walk out and deny our ungodliness, as Second Titus says. Or first, Titus says, second, second chapter, verse 11 through 12. <laughs> laughing at me. <laughs> She's laughing at me. Brother, <laughs> brothers and sisters, you are called to freedom. Only do not let your freedom become an opportunity for the flesh, you see. You see what he's saying here? And I hope you're understanding this. Don't let your freedom become an opportunity for the flesh to, to walk in legalism. You see, I want to say something. When you had, when you had that, what was that? Anybody know that rapper that recently started talking about uh, reading Galatians live? Okay. And I want to tell you, there was some, there's a, a lot of these. This is what I'm talking about. Chance the rapper. Okay. He started reading Galatians, and everybody was praising him, okay? Even there's, there's Christian leaders. There's some pages, some big people you follow that are putting, put down the Christians that were even speaking out. Because the thing is, they have the law within them. They see the fruits. When he just put out a song, and this is the thing is, I would, there's some people are speaking prophecies on here that have thousands of followers. Some of you repost his videos on Facebook and Instagram. And he's, he's from Chicago. Okay, I'm not going to go deeper. I'm not going to name him. But my point is, they're, they're praising him for doing that, saying, hit me up. Hit me up, Chance the Rapper. But the problem is, what he was doing, what they're doing is they're, they have that seed. They have that seed of popularity. They're wanting, they're wanting attention from these people. Okay? But the problem is, he put out a song two days later, and he was advertising it called Ah, uh, S H I T. Okay, so and and it's just lawless. The fruits will be there. That's what I'm saying. The fruits will be there. And these people, these teachers of God's word, that are going to teach you, they won't teach you God's word. The law in the flesh, that's written on our hearts. They're going to teach against it and say you have all grace. That's what they're going to say. Because they're they that they don't. That's what their their fruits are lusting after. Their, their hearts are desiring after these things. Of the bad seeds. And that's what Revelation 18 says. How many people are going to commit apostasy and be, fall away? Okay. I wasn't going to go there. But I felt like I should have. I was going. Who is that? Yahushua? <laughs> it's not where you started. Yeah, it's not where you started. It's where you end. Always remember that. And that's why I said, even some of you with Lecrae. Lecrae started out preaching really well. 
Even his music was convicting. It was fire. It was powerful. He was a man that fought, was following God, okay? But what he did is give his freedom an opportunity for the flesh. That's what it happened. And he, we, he took after those bad seeds. That's why in, in Matthew 13, he's talking about, Yeshua's talking about the seeds. That's why some seeds fell away because of the worries of the world, been choked out because they were lusting after the riches and the worries of the world and popularity. And it lusts for acceptance. That's what Revelation was talking about, Revelation 18. That's what these people lusted after. In a single day, Babylon, all the spirits, gone, gone, gone. Don't let your freedom give way to opportunity for the flesh. But through love, serve one another. For the whole Torah can be summed up in a single saying, love your neighbor as yourself. But if you bite and devour one another, watch out that you are not destroyed by one another. But I say, walk by the rock, and you will not, which is the spirit, sorry, not carry out the desires of the flesh. For the flesh sets its desires against the spirit, but the spirit sets its desires against the flesh. That's why Paul is saying, my flesh does what I, what, you know, what does contrary to what the spirit wants like he's he's like what who can free me from this bondage that's what it's the same thing if you're walking in the spirit you'll always have your flesh fighting warring against you and that's why some of you should if you're in uh, at home you should feel that crying out like i just want to know you and only knew i don't want to know wrong i want to know right i don't want to have that war in my mind warring against me it's like you want to obey God completely to the T every single day, but th then you have this flesh over here. Look at, look at here, look at here, look at, speaking to you, whispering in your ear, causing confusion. It's always talking, leading you to do something you don't want to do, but that's why we have to rely on God's grace, the power to overcome ungodliness and deny it and walk in his ways. Resist the devil and he will flee you. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. Don't say that you are tempted by God. Because you're, you go af, after the sin when you give after your lust. Give way to your lust. That's the flesh. And what happens if you walk after the flesh? You're then in death. It brings death. And what did God's, as I'm going to repeat again, what did God's spirit come to do? Bring life. So, for there are in opposition to one another. So you cannot do what you want. But if you are led by the rock, the spirit, you are not under law. You see what I'm saying? If you are walking in the flesh, you're gonna be un you're you're gonna com be committing s lawlessness. Now, if you're under the spirit, which the law is under your heart, you're gonna walk in the ways of law. See uh, here, he's not saying the law is done away with. Look at here. So that you cannot do what you want, but if you are led by the rock, you are not under the law. Now, the deeds of the flesh are clear: sexual immorality, impurity, and de decency. See, he's going back here. Don't give your freedom as an opportunity to, for the flesh. That's what he says. You are not under the law. Now, you are, the deeds of the flesh are clear. Sexual immorality, impurity, indecency, idolatry, witchcraft, hostility, strife, jealousy, rage, selfish ambition, dissension, factions, envy, drunkenness, carousing, and things like these. Now, if he was just giving, saying, oh, what, just, just right there is just three things to refrain from, then that's, you know, refrain from things, sacrifice, the idols, and choked, and idolatry, and greed, things like that, and sexual immorality, well, there's more here. There's witchcraft, there's hostility, there's strife, there's jealousy. And you have to know what was going on in those, those, those times. What was going on in, in Galatia? What was going on in Ephesus? What was going on in Corinth? You have to know the culture, you know the people, know what Paul was speaking. You can't just read the letter and think you understand it without knowing the culture. You just can't. You will slaughter it. You can't even read Paul if you don't know the Gospels and the Torah. You can't read Paul if you don't understand what he was taught under. How he was relating to some of these people were that were taught under the same moral laws. They were so greatly grounded in the law of God and taught by Hillel and Gamaliel that they were grounded in the word of God. Just like they thought that's the thing. That sector, there's a sector, and that's where you even see the words of Yeshua being repeated from what their teachings were. 
And it was even teachings of love your neighbor as yourself. And those, that's where those things derive from. He's teaching a lot of these things from the Torah, but it's expounded upon there, you know, and he's, te- he's even taught love from those times, but I won't get into all that right now. Um, drunkenness, carousing, and things like these, I war- am warning you, just as I warned you before, that those who do such things will not enter God's kingdom, inherit God's kingdom. So, is the law done away with? Or is it on your heart to give you a power to walk it out? He just said, people that walk in those ways, don't give your freedom as an opportunity for the flesh. For those who, that's what the flesh does. It goes after these things. And those who do those things will not enter God's kingdom. Now, you're saying, well, now is that works? No, your freedom, by grace, remain in the spirit. This law is written on your heart. Don't go after the passions and the ways of your flesh. If the, you know, don't go after money. Don't go after sex. Don't go after drunkenness. Don't go after idolatry. Don't go after the desires of what you want. Greed, power, envy, strife. Don't do these things. Don't even want acceptance from others as if, look, am I doing right? No. Know that you're doing right because you have the Spirit of God within you. He's leading you. Die to yourself because those who don't die to themselves they won't see the kingdom. And they're not going to see God's word. They're going to be like the Pharisees who couldn't see the word in the flesh. They're going to be like those that didn't understand the word in the flesh. They're just going to think they know it. But they're not going to recognize him. So when he, we don't know what we're becoming, but we, when he appears, we know we will be like him. But the fruit of the Ruach, the spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control, self-control. That goes back to Titus. He says his grace came to to, to teach us to deny all ungodliness and live self-controlled lives. His grace is a power. His grace is his laws written on our hearts, okay? It's, It's more than that. It goes deep. What is the law? What is the word? What became flesh? What existed from the beginning? The word existed in the beginning, God spoke, it was the Spirit hovered in the midst, right? God spoke, and the Word made existence, became light. What is light? Those who have a, have a good eye, has a, has a single eye that is full of light, the whole body is light. But if it's darkness, then the whole body is full of darkness. And the ways of the flesh is death, sin is death, lawlessness is death, lawfulness is life, it's light. What became flesh? In John 1, it says, The Word became flesh in the beginning. (sighs) Gentleness and self-control against such things, there is no law. You see what I'm saying? If we know God, (sighs) that's what's beautiful. If we know God, we know the law in the flesh. Nothing goes against the law. You have freedom. But if you go and walk in the ways of the flesh, then you're walking in the ways of death, which is the ways uh, that will lead to death. Um, what do you have here? Yeah. Just start right here. Know this. I'm going to read James really quick, guys. Um, I hope you're enjoying this. Um, yeah. <laughs> You can rewatch it. I'll, I'll post it on YouTube as well. Um, all of this, part one, part two, it might even go to part three. I don't know how long until it cuts off, but if it does, I'll come back in. This is important. Um, um, know this, my dear brothers and sisters. Let every person be quick to listen, slow to speak, and slow to anger. For human for human anger doesn't produce the righteousness of God. So put away all moral filth and excess of evil and receive with humility, humility, the word which is able to save your souls. The key of righteousness. But be doers of the word and not hearers, only deluding yourselves. And Paul even repeats that in Romans. Um... For if anyone is a hearer of the word and not a doer, see, that's what I'm saying. That's what he's talking about legalism. If you are be not, if you're putting in action as a, as a way 
to believe to in your own pride, just as in Galatians, they're having people circumcised and boasting about their circumcision. There's other things they can boast about. There's even people out there that boast about Sabbath all the time. Okay, Sabbath is good. Everything of God is good. Okay, but if you're sitting here boasting about it and bringing people down, you are not walking in the law. You are walking in legalism because you're looking at me. Look at me. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to show all these people in, Galatia, the Gla, in the Galatians. Look at, I just circumcised this man. And they're going to say, look at here. I'm going to make just like he, what he warned him. You made him, Yeshua, Jesus warned him. The Pharisees, you made him twice the sons of the devil. You, per, you go extra miles and miles and travel all over, land and sea, making converts. But then you make them twice the sons of the devil. He's not just speaking about people that are trying to make circumcision, but anything any religion that tries to get you to obey and circ succumb to their doctrine that don't let people question well what is this question you know um you know and they're saying no this is the way though there's only one way one truth and one life and that's yeshua's word i don't care what a man says if you don't read in his word i don't care what i say either read his word let him discern but the people that are being not being doers, they're just boasting about what they're doing in the word, but yet their heart is not circumcised. They don't have a pure heart. They're not doing out of pure conscience. The law is not written on their heart because what they're doing, just like the black Hebrew Israelites, I'm going to name them, and some of these people are coming to the Messianic movement. They're suddenly boasting about everything they're doing. Look at my holy days. I'm lighting the camel candles on Shabbat and... uh. I'm changing my name, and instead of Steve Smith, I'm going to be Bavshiko Wita, you know, like the Israelite from Judah. You know, it's just so I, you know, I'm trying. To, I'm not trying to be a mocker here, but you all get what I'm saying, okay? It's it's not right. Same way they do in Galatia, yeah, it's the same thing they do in, in Galatia. That's why Paul says, that. "I wish they would go all the way and castrate themselves." You see, was that nice? It's no, he was saying he's troubled he was being protective of their sheep those people are trying to destroy people and lead them away from god's grace so um for if anyone is a hearer of the word and not a doer he is like a man who looks at his natural face in the mirror for once he looks at himself and goes away he immediately forgets what sort of person he was but the one who looks intently into the perfect law the torah the law that gives freedom and continues in it, not becoming a hearer. You see, this is going back off of Galatians. But forgets but a doer who acts. He shall be blessed in what he does. So, you see it again right there. He's even saying, if you're not putting the action by the love and the law that's within you, then you're, you're only deceiving yourself. See, the Torah, the law that gives freedom, the law that's put within us is grace has given us a freedom. We are free from death. We are free from the bondage of sin. That's what he came to deliver us from. But if we give way, that's what he says, be careful not to go give way to the flesh. And then you'll know the ways. That's what he says in Galatians. These are the, the, the fruits of the flesh. And he goes over the list of it. But the fruits of the spirit are these things. And that's how we know we're walking this the, the law of God that is the spirit written on our heart or in the law of legalism, of death, in, in lawlessness. So if that makes sense, I hope I explain that and hope some people understand that a whole lot more because I... I without the spirit, you cannot obey God. Without the spirit, you cannot obey God, period. Online. Period. And anybody that talks against the law being, you know, and says it's done away with all those things, they... Your they flesh ha cannot obey God. You need yeah. the spirit to obey God. You need the spirit to obey God. Your flesh cannot obey God. And that's the thing. That's the thing. Those who don't have the spirit cannot obey God. They'll stumble at his commandments. He even says that. He says they'll stumble at my commandments and it's it'll become a stumbling block for those who do not have the spirit. And that's why you see people that are being legalistic of the law and fo even following it. Some people are boasting about how they keep these things and taking pictures of these things and videos of these things. And they're like, you know, um, 
that's because they they are not walking. They don't have the spirit because they that they don't have love. There's no love in order to obey these things. The ways of God is good, holy, righteous, and good as 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 long as it's made used for a good purpose, out of love for God. They wouldn't be boasting about what they're doing to be boasting. It's about it's going to cut off. Mind. So come right back in, and I'll I'll continue this, guys.